Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy Happy campers! campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 106 here at camp. We never record this early, just being fully transparent. I am feeling electric. We have such an exciting show for you. It's full of nonsense and craziness. And to pregame this show, I started off my morning with two ice-cold cheesy breadsticks from um, Papa John's. My mouth is coated in a garlic butter. I'm washing it all down with a polar raspberry lime. And I'm just, I'm invigorated that you're here and you're listening. So thank you for being here. I love that you're doing that at 10 a.m. That's like magical. We just never start early, but there's, we're just boots on the ground today because we have to get this story out. It's essentially breaking news, what we're about to break to you. Y'all are not going to believe who was sat next to us like three days ago. At a major motion picture event. But well, before- I don't think it's a motion picture. It's a, a major <laughs> Hulu special event. Was it Hulu? Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah, FX specifically. Yes. Hey, but before we go there, we have to go back. All, All the, the way, way back. back. <laughs> <laughs> where my Epcot girlies at? Where my Epcot girlies at? Okay, so where does the story begin? Because the tale for the opener of today's episode is truly an event that we experienced this week that we were in the middle of it, in the throes of it, and saying, campers need to know campers are going to die. We tell fables. We tell a lot of fables. But this, we have photographic proof of what was going down. So please. Yeah, and at the end of it all, you're going to have to make your own judgment about what's true and what's not, just like the quarter. Of court of opinion, but like we'll get there when we get there. And I think we're gonna start off with what the event was. It was for the um the FX show Grotesquerie, which I feel like I can't say without going grotesquely. Yeah, I think that so it's a Ryan Murphy show, and Ryan Murphy has produced like a billion and a hundred thousand shows. Ryan Murphy actually, let's just start off by getting the elephant in the room sat for a second. Sit down. Because that elephant's <laughs> Sit down, standing elephant. and it's Stressing me out. The elf in the room is Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy is in the middle of being some sort of, not canceled, but they're putting him under a critical lens. I think he loves I think rightfully so. No, I totally agree. I think he loves to make stories gay that aren't gay. As a gay man, like, my, my, like, sassy side's, like, good. Like, why can't we have a part of history? But at the same time, it's like, we can't just, like, write these in because you want to, especially when you're retelling historical events right you're talking about the menendez brothers and as someone who didn't see an episode but i saw the trailer i was like oh this is like homo erotica is this what this show is about again didn't see it and so i don't know but we're not going to give our opinions on it because we didn't see the show and i don't know much about the menendez brothers but i do know that ryan murphy can be problematic and can i see why yeah 100 percent um, that being said, we did go to this event. Um, well, this, I, okay, wait, this was before it came out, though. Dad, the trailer was out. Why so does this say. always happen? I'm always, like, raving about something before Scandal. This, and then when I, when, after we saw um, It Ends With Us, I was like, I love Blake. And everyone, like, the next day was like, Blake deserves to be, like, never in a movie ever again. And I'm like, okay, I'm always on the wrong side of history with this kind of stuff, I guess. I don't want to be. <laughs> You're missing the biggest one. What? The Bachelor. Oh, the Golden Bachelor? No, The Bachelor. Oh, when my friend Sydney went on, I was like, she's going to do so good. And then she ended up being canceled by the entire internet. And I have opinions about that. And I'm still good. I always ride for these people. I'm like, Sydney, I I think you're a great person. I think it was lost in the edit. We're getting lost in the story. (laughs) We are truly getting lost. So the event opens up at this grotesquery screening. It's It's the world premiere of the show. And um, I was asked to go. I could bring a plus one. I brought Jonathan. And then my managers right now are just so obsessed with getting me with photographs taken of me. I don't know. The push for me to do red carpet stuff right now is a little overwhelming. It's like, I don't need to be. Why am I there? You know what I mean? So they were like, oh, if creators want to do the red carpet, they can do it from 620 to 630. I'm like, oh, there's a 10 minute window for me to get my photo taken. I don't even want my photo taken. So I lied to my team and told them that my bus was late. I mean, my train was late, but it's just because I didn't want to get my photo taken. It's <laughs> uncomfortable to get your photo taken this yeah, time. Yeah. Especially is. when the photographers don't care about you. Uh-huh. They're like, no. You get the the one snap, the, the petty snap. Yeah. So that being said, we showed up promptly late on purpose at 645. 
Um, we enter this very large room and quickly I realized that this was not like a typical influencer screening kind of premiere event. This was truly, as it should be, the cast and crew. Right. And at some point you're right. It's like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Grateful to be your plus one, but like what? are we doing here? Yeah, 100%. I don't I, I don't think I deserve to be there over anyone else in that room. You know what I mean? Because they were actually on the set and I'm over here like Snapchat in the corner. But boots were on the ground and this holding room that they had us in, which was where like the red carpet is, which was like a very pretty burgundy. No, that's not it. Oh no, it was purple. setting. It, it was, was like a, a great dark set. Purple. Yeah, and they, they decorated this room. There was a bar in the middle. They were like, hey, it's not open until the show's over. Okay, that's fine. And there's jars of like Kool-Aid that's supposed to be blood all over the walls and stuff. It was just like, it felt like I was in like a like a, a high school punk girl's locker. Yeah, logistically, if you've never been to one of these events and you're curious how it looks, when you walk into the room, there is one wall is all the photographers and then it loops around the other wall and that's where all the interview parts are for the magazines and the newspapers and then the other half of the room where Jonathan and I were sat awkwardly for 45 minutes was kind of like a grab bag of just mingling on couches and buy fruit juice on the wall so it was very chic I can say like well it's literally Disney owns FX and Hulu and like Disney has money so Disney spade Spared no expense. Also, everybody who's working there is so in character with the show. True. I had no idea what the show was going to be about, but there were people in, like, nurses' uniforms and, like, um, inspe- not inspectors, investigators with their, like, hazmat suits on with flashlights, like, looking around. And every table had a little uh, a tent that had, like, um, an evidence number on it. Yeah. It was cool. I love that. It's very cool. And everyone looked great. And everyone appeared to know each other. I didn't know a single soul in the room. I was like, okay, they didn't invite... They, 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 I feel like they didn't invite any other influencers. Or maybe they didn't go. You know what it was competing with that night that I realized after? What? That was the Madison Square Garden Charlie XCX concert. Oh, yes. So they probably reached out and everyone was like, baby, I'm having my brat summer finale tonight. Yeah. I'm not going to this. And me and you were like, well, no. Um, <laughs> Everyone's taking their final bite of the apple. So we're sitting down and a very important person for weird reasons, and we'll get there when we get there, walks in. The celebrity in question, if you're listening audio only, was Mama Kelsey, Donna Kelsey, matriarch to the Kelsey brothers' fortune and fame. Yes, Donna Kelsey. Soon to be, hopefully, future mother-in-law of Miss Taylor Swift. Yeah. So Travis is in the show. That's so Ryan I'm Murphy, confused. though. Ryan Murphy loves stunt casting. And like, am I a sucker to stunt casting? Of course. When they have a reality TV show, show up on Broadway for a limited engagement, I like it. I think it generates buzz. So like, yeah, I think at this point in Ryan Murphy's game, he's got to stay creative. And it's like, of course, Niecy Nash is leading this cast and she is a powerhouse. But why not add a little flavor from, I think, the sexier Kelsey brother. But I feel like I'm wrong in that. I think people like the Eagle, but I like the KC. No, I like. I think he's, he's Which one do you the think's cuter, cuter one. For sure, Travi. Oh my God. So you think that, but collectively, campers, we'll have to get some outreach here. We're going we're gonna to send some um, cue cards to the cabins tonight, and we're going to have you <laughs> fill out which Kelsey brother. We're doing, okay, this is literally demographic research at this point. We have to do it. We're basically the census. So we're going to send that to your cabins tonight, campers. <laughs> Please fill out in the comments below who do you think is cuter. Whatever happens, happens. It's 45 minutes in the holding cell of this event space, and then they release us into the theater. And I love when events like this do offer a little refreshment, uh, a tiny boxed water and a milk carton and then a bag of popcorn in an evidence bag it's in the details people do not eat at these events when you look at me at these events i am like basically like chewing the paper from the popcorn bag i'm just like (laughs) making a ball and like throwing it up and gagging out like a dog like i'm just disgusting you i cannot be given food i could literally be at the un press conference and i'd be like on the stand eating a celery stick like if it was available like i just always in snacking so i was very grateful for the popcorn add-on feature so while we're grabbing our bag of evidence popcorn and we're we're being escorted uh by the ushers walking us to our seats and um the, the people are already sat in this room which is red light it's very very dark it's very spooky i don't know i felt like a little order of french fries under a warming light oh like a heating lamp yeah Yeah. well they were kind of continuing the vibes of the spook into this theater space right 
So we're walking and I'm like, okay, are we going to stop anytime soon? We're still walking. I'm like, oh, wow, we're getting close to the podium where everybody stands up and does, does their speeches. And we're walking. They sat, uh, well, they sat Zachariah in the second row. There are four seats in this second row because it's split up by the aisle. So it's Zach, me, and then two empty chairs. Yeah, and like we are on the side of the theater that is directly near the podium. So the podium is, I would say, seven feet in front of us. I said, why did they seat us here? I'm not upset, but I'm definitely sitting with the cast at this point, which is just... Guys, we're not bragging. We're just like in sh pure shock because we're like, I do, I should not be here. Like the entire cast of people is mingling two feet away from us and we're just sitting there. And then guess who is sat in the row directly behind us, ushered in? Mama Kelsey. So Mama Kelsey is sitting on the aisle seat and all the stars are sitting on the aisle seats. So there is us against the wall, two seats to our right. Directly behind those two empty seats and the next four is Donna Kelsey. And her guests. So there's they're filling up that row. And then the two seats next to us, each of them had like a, a name with a piece of tape. And the seat on the further side had the name ripped off, but the tape was still there. So Jonathan looks at me and he makes the most stunning revelation that has ever been uttered in the counselor universe. Jonathan, what did you say to me? Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are supposed to sit next to us. And that is not a lie. That is not a joke. Every other star was accounted for in the aisle seats directly in front of Mama Kelsey. Allegedly. Travis. We're still not sure, but in this theory, in this fan fiction here, it does appear as if those two seats would have been for Travis and his guest. His guest would have been Taylor. And the reason why they couldn't come was due to a scheduling conflict because of sports. Oh, is a scheduling conflict. What is he doing? He's literally playing football. So? I know. And I'm like, honestly, like, football's going to end soon. Like, this could be the upswing of the next part of your career. Like, you're really missing out. And they could have met us. <laughs> and I think they were like, who would Tay? Because, like, Taylor and Trav, they're long line. They're like, they're, we're, they're good friends of the show. Good friends of us. Last time I talked to Taylor was, like, a couple weeks ago. I was just checking in on her, making sure she was good. Um, and like, we just go really far back. I, I can't even get into it right now because it's just, it, our families and our friends are just, we're, we're a woven tapestry. And our, our song is a slam and screen door. So I texted her. Um, I said, Hey, where are you? Like show's about to start. And then the text failed. Um, <laughs> so yeah. You got to uh, bounce back. They never came. And I kept thinking at some point, oh, it's going to be a big, they're going to come out from behind the car. I thought so too. And they and they didn't campers, but this seat was for them. No one told us that because we're investigators at this point, and we got down to the nitty gritty. So yeah, but while we were waiting for them to show up, which they didn't, something really funny happened. I want to talk about what. There was a woman directly in front of us who was sitting front row, and she was kind of like mysterious. Giving Stevie Nicks witchy vibes. Just say she had a shawl. She had stacked chains and, yeah, a black shawl and gold crosses and, like, very chic. And every single person in the cast was going up to her saying, oh, my God, you look so good. I'm so excited for tonight. And I was thinking, is she in the show? But then I put two and two together. I made four. And I realized that she had something to do with the casting or directing. Once again, assuming. So then... <laughs> we literally could have IMDb checked that and we didn't. For the next 10 minutes, Jonathan and I were like posing and giggling and trying to look like movie stars that if she saw, she would cast us. And I don't think she ever looked at us. At one nope. point, I laughed too loud and she looked over her shoulder as if she was annoyed. So I got the reverse of casting. I got blacklisted. We were also crunching that popcorn. You know what though? I'll say this about the popcorn. I remember eating it viciously. Ferociously, some would even say. And I remember looking out in the audience and looking at people in the eyes and saying, it's okay, you're a safe girl, you're a safe girl. I was like giving that message. And then one by one, the entire audience grabbed their popcorn from the ground and started to enjoy it. And people were just clap. nervous. I don't love eating popcorn in a situation like that only because- You, you don't like <laughs> eating anything in public. So I, I think popcorn is the safest thing to eat in public. But I will say the only thing that made me stop eating that popcorn 
was after I dropped the fourth piece. Oh, yeah. And then you get up, the lights are on, and everybody can see the collection of crumbs under your seat. No, it's so embarrassing. And, like, I, and I don't ever grab a couple pieces. I, like, do this kind of, like, fist handful thing. And when I was watching Trim, Trim Crazy on HBO, I said, oh, I actually can see where my ancestors lie in the apes because the way that me and the apes eat a Happy Meal is eerily interchangeable. <laughs> So I do notice my chimpanzee qualities at this event. Uh, Ryan Murphy did speak, which regardless how we feel about him right now, it's kind of up in the air. It was cool to see him because he is a very a staple of Hollywood. He's got a lot of shows on his belt. Um, at the end of the day, the show I thought was interesting. What was weird though was that they played episode three because he and Ryan wanted to make sure Rye Rye was just like really checking on the cast and crew and was like, "Hey." I want to make sure that everybody that came to this premiere is in the episode. So we're going to do a later episode that everyone can see themselves in. As an audience member, I was upset because I was like, I don't get the context because he gave us a two minute, not even like a 10 second synopsis of what was happening. Niecy Nash, I will say, is delivering. She gave a monologue that gave me goosebumps. Oh my I God, everybody her. was applauding. It was fantastic. Um, and Mama Kelsey's phone did go off a couple times. She couldn't figure out how to turn it off. So she just sat on it. Oh my God. And and this is like not a I shouldn't have said that. No, you, I don't care. No, you can say it because it was it was so cute. It was so senior. Yeah. Senior coded. The ringtone is sprinkles if you have an iOS. Apple, you know, check that out, iPhone. Uh, Because what happened was it went off in the middle of the show and I looked behind her and she's fumbling the phone and she just put it, she sat on it. Like, guys, I like literally, that's just what happened. She, I heard her say, how do I turn it off? And she couldn't turn it off. And it was during, it was like right before Travis was about to come on screen. So she literally just shoved it under her butt and it muffled it. If this gets back to mama and, because it will get back to mama because of course my connections with Taylor and Travi. She is a Nepo mommy. Jonathan said that on the couch last night. He's like, oh, if you think about Donna Kelsey, she's a Nepo mommy. I told him, I was like, I don't think that's ever been said out loud before. That was really funny. Who else do you think are Nepo parents? Tokyo Tony. Tokyo Tony, she she told people on the internet that she had 418 million people watch her wedding. And that is just not true. She is lying about everything. And if you don't know who she is, you probably have seen her in a meme. I have shared them a hundred times. It is Black China's mom. So can you imagine Black China and Chris Jenner at dinner? Wait, I'm clocked in. Those I want a martini with those two. Whoa! Daddy Del Rey. Yeah, I guess, but he, she, she's so low-key and he's even more low-key. He did walk her down the aisle. As of today, we did find out that Lana married the alligator hunter, which we'll we'll get there when we get there. But also, I'm looking at the pictures and I, I'm like, this could have easily been like a music video. I don't think it is. Um, I don't I, know. Let her live her life privately. I don't like when there's wedding pictures of celebrities or ce- like when Lady Gaga was at her sister's wedding or whoever's wedding that was. And there's like a picture from like a drone or a, a How helicopter. How is that not illegal? You, it's like, oh God, we have to, we have to block the airspace now. Also, it's somebody else's wedding. Like, why are you doing that? That's why when Kylie Jenner had her first baby shower for Stormy, everything was tented in the backyard. Because like Smart. she simply had to. Because it's like I can't enjoy a personal moment without having drones above my house. Yeah, um, they would see a lot if there was drones above our house. Actually, I'm not outside naked. I don't know why I said that. Never mind about that. Donna was not famous before she had those boys. And it comes down to who is Nepo Mommy. And it's DKNY because Donna Kelsey was in New York, not Donna Karen. So at the end of the day, was the event fun? Yeah. When it ended, was I enjoying the cocktail party? No, because I didn't know anybody. Everyone was cast and crew. And I had a free glass of wine. I looked at, I looked at Jonathan. I said, okay, I want to go eat dinner because the past plates are the size of a nickel. And I need to actually grub down on some good food because the popcorn is not settling right. So we leave and we go out to dinner at this, um, I don't know, little restaurant right around the event space. And when we went inside, you guys, we met a server who can only be described as the word pernicious. Completely and utterly pernicious. Morally corrupt, I would say, Faye Resnick. Can you give us a definition? Of course I can. Merriam-Webster. 
Pernicious is having a harmful effect, especially in a gradual or subtle way. You literally wrote that down and you were ready for that question. I was because I knew that you weren't going to you were going to need it because you have a hard time even remembering the word pernicious. Persephone. No, pernicious, pernicious because it just means like, oh, you're dark sided. You're you're scaring me. But it's in a subtle way where it's like, am I going crazy? It's like the gaslighting of crazy is pernicious. Right. Because when you walk in and she comes over and she's all bubbly, a little spacey and she's like, hi, hi. I'm like, hi, you guys still serving food? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, sorry, I'm asking a weird question. It's 10 p.m. I'm just making sure I need to eat because I'm like, here just to drink. So I was, she's like, oh, you can sit at these two tables? And she turns around, there's two, two tops, but one is dirty. And I was like, oh, we can sit at this one. The it clean also one. only had one chair. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, we'll sit the clean one. And she says, quote, you can sit there, whatever. And then she proceeds to twirl her hair. And chew her gum that she didn't have in her mouth. Like, what was she chewing on? And she walked away. It felt like it felt like a Judd Apatow depiction of like a spacey waitress in a 2009 like adult comedy classic. So then we sit down, and she takes our drink orders, and they had a full wine list. So I go, "Can I just get a glass of prosecco?" And she gives me a look, like they didn't have that there. And I'm like, "Do you have prosecco?" And then she gives me an answer as if that was a dumb question. She goes. Yeah. And then she looks over to the bar and there's like a shit ton of bottles and there's Prosecco like everywhere. And I'm like, well, why are you making this weird, girl? And then she kind of rolls her eyes and then walked away. Yeah. When I ordered my Tito's mule, she was very confused. Um, It was a weird, it was an interesting dinner. Like we were laughing so much because like what had just happened with DKNY and now with this perniciously morally corrupt waitress. Um, Jonathan did order the tuna melt on pumpernickel against his better judgment. Jonathan is a real deep seated hatred towards pumpernickel. And we, as a community in campers, like we've sat you down, Jonathan, and we've tried to get to the nitty gritty of why you hate brown bread. And I don't think you've ever been able to look at any of us campers and tell us why that is. Do you want to make a comment about your hate of pumpernickel? No, no comment. I, I just, I, it's not my bread of choice. It never has been and it never will be. Jonathan is so media trained. Um, <laughs> I ordered the meatloaf um, because I'm a freak. Why is meatloaf, like, why is it served like a loaf? I love meatloaf. And let's just skip to the ending here. The meatloaf wasn't good. And I almost got my safety meal, a turkey club. But you looked at me and you said, just get the meatloaf. Like, when do you ever have a meatloaf? And it I, felt like a good idea because you always get a, a, a TC. I totally believe, I believe you because I never get the ML. And I was like, let's just like be freaky and get the meatloaf. And when I ordered that, she made me feel stupid. And it, when it came out, it was fine. It was a little dense. Like, it, it was packed too much. Yeah. I needed a little bit more airflow. Um, but no, it was just a totally pernicious night. The <laughs> Taylor's have not showing up to Travi's like big night was kind of pernicious him not showing up is totally outwardly oh and vicious. i will i will say i i didn't hate his acting like it didn't feel too like no because he's so char- he's actually very charming he's screen. charming i was smiling i was smirking yeah, i was yeah. put, putting my hair behind my ear and giggling travis he's huh. got swag don't say that again no because he does because if i was on screen delivering those lines it would have not come across the way that he did like, I was like, oh, my God, is he flirting with me? And then Nisi Nash was like, that's my man. And I said, okay, Nice. Um, yeah. So that was the night. And the word of the day is pernicious. Attention, campers. Please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements, campers. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we want you to spread like wildfire. Jonathan, will you take us on your reporting journey? Yes, I will. Get your beakers and your goggles out, campers, because we're going to the science fair. So this is a CNN article. Um, oh, sorry. It's a CNN science article. Okay, STEM. I thought you were going to say get your guide. Get your guide? What? You get your goggles. I'm oh, sorry. get your go- get your goggles on. Uh, so it's a CNN science article by Issy Ronald, and it's titled "Scientists Who Discovered Mammals Can Breathe Through Their Anuses Receive IG Nobel Prize." Instagram Nobel Prize. And that's what I thought. I didn't actually figure out what it, it stands for, but <laughs> can it I stands guess? for. Some- you can guess, but I'm not going to be able to tell you if it's correct or not. Oh, because you never looked it up. No, I didn't. I looked up what it is, but not what it stands for. I'm going to guess international global, which just means the same thing twice. 
<laughs> it's so nasty. We had to say it twice. Okay. So here's what it is. Okay. The I the Instagram Nobel Prize is a satiric prize awarded annually since 1991 to celebrate 10 unusual or trivial achievements in scientific research. So the award, uh, their aim for this award is to celebrate the unusual, honor the imaginative, and spur some people's interest in science, medicine, and technology by making people laugh, then think. So they did have a full uh, live stream of this happening. And when they re-uploaded the live stream, they put like a couple edits in to, to show what they were talking about. And it's not really that long, but I did watch a couple clips. These people were having fun. I was like expecting something really boring because it's science. I'm sorry to my scientists. Hey, science was my favorite subject, but it can be boring, especially for an award. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm bored. Yeah. But they were like throwing paper airplanes and there was someone who was singing about murphy's slaw like coleslaw i don't know it was a hoot and holler and good time so it was a two-hour ceremony and it was just as quirky as the scientific achievements it was celebrating audience members were welcome to their seats by accordion music and i think that's what ryan murphy was missing when we went well i don't think i think accordion music can really elevate any space so i would have liked it yeah of course So among these collecting their prizes was a European-wide research team who was awarded the Probability Prize for conducting 350,757 experiments to demonstrate that a coin tends to land on the same side it started when it's flipped. That is such critical information, campers, because if you're in a situation where you have to do a coin toss, go with where the coin started. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'll pick, but let me see where your hand's at. Yeah, that's <laughs> important information. It is. Um, J- Oh, my God. Jeremy Allen White. Jacob White and someone else won the Botany Prize for finding evidence that some real plants attempt to attempt to mimic the leaves of nearby fake plants. That's scary to me. Well, yeah, I think we're all influenced by our crime. Speaking of Charlie XCX and Apple, there's a book. It's called Botany of Desire, and we were... Uh, forced to read it in college. I don't remember what course I was taking, um, but it was required of me. And somewhere in there, they were talking about how apples have been able to change over time, depending on what people like. And I just couldn't comprehend that. It's really, apples are so interesting to me because if you do like your research amongst your peers, a lot of people aren't consuming apples the way that I'm consuming apples. It's true. You do eat an apple a day and I haven't seen you with a doctor. I eat probably three to four apples a week. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty interesting about me. I'm always afraid to... <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Like, I, when I think about myself, I'm like, oh, so that's dumb. an interesting quirk about myself because I don't think people are eating apples the way I'm eating apples. Like, if you're out there eating apples, campers, like, let me know. But I don't think you are. Yeah, but if you are, you're not alone. You're, like, <laughs> at an icebreaker. You're like, my name is Zachariah. Oh, no, wait, it's two truths and a lie. And that's when everybody's like, and my lie is. And it's like, no, you're not supposed to tell us that it's a lie. Anyway, let's get back to this. We're derailing. Yes. Please. <clears throat> Everyone focus. I didn't take my medication today. Okay, so this guy named James C. Lau won the physics prize for demonstrating and explaining how a dead trout swims. So I guess they could, maybe muscle memory? I don't know. And there was a French Chilean research team who won an anatomy prize for studying whether hair swirls in the same direction on the heads of people in the northern atmosphere as in the southern atmosphere. So you know how like the drain goes around, like it swirls the different, the opposite sides. So apparently people's hair like swirls differently depending on where you are on the, on the prime meridian ass. That is really interesting. Yeah, it's like thinking outside of the box, because who would have thought that? Is that helping anything on a global level? No, but should we award something to it? Yes. Yeah, why not? Okay, so then here we are, the stars of the show. Japanese research team led by Ryo Ryo Okabe um, discovered that mammals can breathe through their anuses. And there is a picture of them demonstrating this. They were truly having a great time. And this picture is what made me want to do this article because just reading the headline, I was so bored. I'm sorry, snooze fast. But they're like dressed up. One of them was dressed up like a cow. The other one had a, uh, was shooting air through one of the balloon pumps, the hand pumps, to show that air goes in the anus and you can breathe. As How does a mammal. It get to your lungs? I don't know. You're going to have to read their paper. I tried to read the paper. I couldn't even read the title are of it. Are we considered the mammals here or are these animals? People can be mammals. I'm trying right now and I'm not getting anything. So they said that their research um, was 
initially done because during the pandemic, uh, people had run low on artificial lung supplies and they wanted to figure out if there was a way that mammals could possibly breathe a small percentage of survivable oxygen through their, their anal cavity. And it turns out we can. To that I say, some mammals have bad breath and congratulations to everyone who won the talent show. Yeah, that's a, a, a big breakthrough for science. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. I thought it was fun. Also, it was a really slow news week, guys. That's, that's what I got. Well, I have quite an interesting article. It is. Uh, it's um, titled Pretty Airbnb has two year waiting list despite guests being put to work. Um, so this is from the Mirror UK. I love going to an Airbnb and then requesting that I cut the grass. Well, this is going to take a twist. Okay. So it's from the Mirror UK and the uh, author of the article is Lauren Beavis. So welcome to the welcome to the world's only bookshop Airbnb where guests can spend the night and run the store during the day. The Open Book is a delightful bookshop with an apartment above, allowing people to sleep upstairs and sell books downstairs. Located in Wigtown, Scotland's national book town, Wig. it offers book enthusiasts the opportunity to live their dreams of owning their very own seaside shop. Airbnb describes it as the first ever bookshop holiday residency experience, and it is so sought after that it has a two-year waiting list from guests worldwide. So the Wigtown Festival Company established it. Um, with the aim to celebrate books, independent bookshops, and welcome people from around the world. So this town in um, Scotland is like the book capital of the country. Okay. So they kind of do this like book festival every year, and this is like the crown jewel of the festival. So is this shop or this town? What? The shop is the crown jewel of the festival? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because it's brought in people to this like random place in Scotland from around the world. Like people come to stay at this place. I love a bookstore. Yeah, exactly. So since welcoming its first holiday makers in August 2014, the charity run open book Airbnb has become a sensation. More than 450 guests from all corners of the globe, including Hawaii and Beijing, have relished the unique experience of running their own bookshop. So how it works, like live your dream of having your own bookshop by the sea. Um, and it's nestled in the pristine surroundings of the Galloway. Is that how you say that? Galloway? The Galloway. Know. We need to get Saoirse Ronan on the pod immediately because she could sell this even better than I can. So it's a, so it's a charming bookshop on the open sea, sea town of um, Wigtown in Galloway. And um, it's like a really cute bookstore on the bottom. And essentially like how it works, guys, is if you rent there and stay there, you have full control over the bookstore. Like you can open it, you can <gasps> not open it. Surge pricing. You can literally price, you can rearrange the books, you can do your own specials, you can do whatever you want. Oh my God, that's fun. Yeah, so people go in there like with a bunch of different ideas. It's really cool. I think that's such a fun idea because it's like, I would never own a bookstore or run a bookstore, but the chance to do it and be like, just stay above it, you know, and look out with my little cup of tea. So this is the quote, I found it. During their stay, guests are free to change displays, price books, recategorize them, and make um, inventive use of the blackboard that entices visitors to browse or chat. Some guests are very happy to quietly run the bookshop while others come with firmer plans and creative ideas. So people come and they're like, oh no, like I'm running a bookstore for a week. Like it's like, it's like the dream is to own a bookstore. Yeah. It's not is, really, that's the vacation. Is it like new books or, or old books? Because in my head, it's like it's old, old books. No, it's new books. They're new books, but it's it's very like, a tr it looks quaint. It's okay. very old aesthetic. -like. Yeah. I wonder if they would have an issue if they're like 99 cent book day. Well, they did a little profile on the current guests that were there to give us some like, I don't know, insight to what it's like. Okay. Um, this week's guests are Daisy Young, 41, who journeyed from Hong Kong, and her secondary school friend, Lydia Mon, 42. Daisy, a psychologist in Hong Kong prison, discovered the unique Airbnb through an online blog. Wow. Um, she shared, so far, we are enjoying it very much. My dream has, to al has always been to be a bookseller one day. But since it's very hard to become a bookseller and make enough money, we thought it would be fun to have a taste of it. Um, the weather here is is really excellent this week, and everybody here is just so nice. So it's like she's like, I'm a psychologist. I'm uh, passionate about books. I want to have this dream. It will probably never happen, but I could just go live it. This is like a really on a on a wider conversation on a wider scope here. 
very fun because I feel like I can't think of them right now, but there's probably a lot of ways we could do this in different markets. I like this idea a lot. This is cool. A hot dog cart. Um, you can rent a hot dog cart. Yeah, that isn't for some. Maybe. I panicked. I was trying to help you out there. But I agree. I think this is really fun because like she said, it's like you spend all that time doing what you want to do in your career. Let me just take a little break and run this bookshop. It's so cottage core. It's so it's, wait till you see the town. It's like it's it's like it's exactly what you want in a Scottish uh, town. No, it's gorgeous. wait, can you describe what the roofs are like? Are they shingles or are they, is it like slate roof or thatch? Well, when you look at it from a drone shot, it's all these like small square patches of grass that are all like like um like broken off by like uh stone walls and wooden fences for horses like very much like uh dirt kind of gray paths on a cliffside very intensely green and just i don't know i think it is kind of that like stucco and slate mm-hmm. coastal town of europe loves that um so the duo had come up with a theme for their bookshop this week and as of today it marks the mid-autumn festival in china they've chosen to honor their cultural celebration at the bookstore Daisy explained, traditionally, we Chinese people gather with our families and friends on this day and light up lanterns and eat something called mooncakes, which is what we have brought and are sharing with the people today. I'm actually freaking out. To know me, campers, the only thing I love more than apples is the idea of a mooncake. I've never had one, and I'm begging Jonathan today to take me to get a mooncake because there was a show on PBS called Sagwa, and they ate these cartoon mooncakes, and it was about a Siamese cat in China. And I've wanted a mooncake my entire life, and this is the exact festival is happening right now. It's like goes on for, like I think, a couple weeks, and this is it. So I want to go to Chinatown today. And I want to get a mooncake. It's and there's so many different flavors, and they're all like very like flavors I've never experienced before. So my palate's going to be a little unsure, but I'm excited to try a bunch of different stuff. Like, that is so funny because you truly have maybe like a week ago I was looking up places locally that we could go to get a mooncake because that's all you talk about. I want they're so gorgeous. This is a sign from the universe. It is, and I just think like that was their theme, so you could really do anything. Well, that's nice. That's really fun that they got to bring their culture there and still celebrate how they normally would celebrate and you know, celebrate with strangers in their temporary bookshop. Yep. So the bookshop is called The Open Book. So if you search The Open Book Wig Town on Airbnb, you can see it. The apartment above it is like very modest and cute. It looks clean. Like it's definitely not a Four Seasons, you guys. Like you're going to experience like kind of like your version of the holiday if it was at the bookstore. That's like part of it though. I think that's the whole part of it. I don't want fluorescent lights in that building. No, I don't think you're going to get that. You're going to get a a piping cuppa. And a good and a good read. And possibly a bookworm. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to lice it up and take a hike. So uh, before I get into it, somebody um did have a good suggestion. Oh my god, I didn't write the name down. I'm so sorry, but I'll put a screenshot up here. Um Uh, This comment was on our YouTube video. Can we just do a whole episode of submitted take a hikes or your take a hikes? So relatable. It has me cry laughing. So on our website, if you go, you can submit your own take a hike. Maybe we'll do it. Don't you think that'd be fun? You can submit a take a hike? Yeah, I put in a, it's a new thing on the drop down menu, campcounselorspodcast.com. Oh my God. Go do that, campers. That's so fun. Yeah. So my take a hike, what would I submit if I was to submit? wet hand towels at a group gathering particularly a friend's party in the bathroom yes in the bathroom now i don't know everybody at this party i just met this person and now i'm going to the bathroom and then i am i am feeling the dampness from their post piss ritual and that's just Ooh. weird also i hate a damp towel to begin with like it's just so annoying and so not necessary and then it starts to smell mildewy even if it is clean. No, I totally agree. Um, but uh, I don't host for that reason. People aren't coming to my house. They're not going to experience that. If you're at our house, if you're in our cabin, you should feel blessed because we're just not hosting people. No, we're not. Maybe we should. Maybe we should just invite all the campers and I'll just, you know, constantly be running a dryer of hand towels to exchange. Wait, I'm going to call myself out for a second because your friend came over who is helping style you for the upcoming tour and use our bathroom. And I was like, 
made sure that morning, I made sure that bathroom was clean. I was like, let me scrub the toilet. I'm going to scrub everything so that it's not nice. Because I knew she was coming over. I was like, just in case she has to use the bathroom, let's just like give it a little refresh, you know? And what I didn't do was replace the hand towel. And she came out of the bathroom and she was like gently wiping her hands on her pants. And you were like, was there no hand towel in there? And I thought to myself, oh, damn. I took it out, but I never put a new clean one in. And that's on me. And that's why you don't need people at your house. And that's why we don't. Yes. No, I'm going to be so dead ass. Like, it's just it it harbors a smell of mildew. It harbors bacteria. And it makes uh, me harbor a resentment for whoever's throwing this party. Your mom has those disposable ones. And I've never seen those in anyone's house except your mom's house. Really? I like them. The, like the the Kleenex hand towels? I had never. I didn't even know that was a thing until I went to your parents' house a couple years ago. Oh yeah, all my aunts and uncles have them in their house. It's, Maybe it's like a family thing. Maybe it's a Pennsylvania thing. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a sanitary thing for sure. Yeah. Well, they also have the option if you're you know eco friendly to use a normal hand towel. But I, you know how I think my first ever take a hike was the hand dryers because it doesn't dry your hand. And here I am not allowing my house guests to use a hand towel. Look at you. You have a lot of qualms about wet hands. Pernicious. 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 C- Pernicious. Camille Grammer. Anybody? Anybody? Please. Okay, so that's my take a hike. What's um what's your take a hike? Um, mosquitoes. Get fucked. I'm so sick of these motherfuckers. It is literally as this episode airs, October. What are we? What are we? What are we still doing here? You got to go. We went on to eat last week. I'm sitting at the table. They're like, we didn't have a reservation. That's fine. She was like, well, I will we'll take whatever comes up next. She's like, I have a table outside. I'm like, it's gorgeous out. It was like a, a balmy 70 at night. And I'm like, this is lovely. Except I'm being eaten alive by fucking mosquitoes. And it's like, in September, you got to go. And your reaction to that was crazy. His allergic reaction, not his emotional reaction. He had a bite on his hand. And it started to look like, you know those topographical like globes, kind of like what we have here, but where they're actually bumpy? Is that one like that? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. It is. Well, that's what it looks like on your hand. Like a giant mountain was... was I thought we were going to have to take you somewhere because it kept no, growing. I always... All my mosquito bites are just insane like that. Now, I have a thought. What? If you're drunk and the mosquito sucks your blood, is the mosquito drunk with you? 100%. That's crazy. I did so much research on mosquitoes. Okay. No, I know. Because I was like, wait, where? how do they survive the winter? Because I was like, do they fly south like a butterfly? They don't. And campers, if you've never been educated about mosquitoes, strap in for a little camp lesson, okay? Everyone's sitting around the campfire or at your bunks, this is truly so camp themed, I'm obsessed. No, literally, you're a bugologist. This episode is sponsored by malaria. I'm just <laughs> joking. Um, okay, so where do we begin, campers? Um, a female mosquito lives 45 to 56 days. Okay, short life. A, a male mosquito lives 10 days. <gasps> No, isn't that crazy? Why? I don't know. They just like don't. Oh, actually, I do know why. Male mosquitoes feed on plant nectar alone. Oh my God. So every mosquito bite I've ever had has been a little girl. It's a bitch. It's wow. literally insane. No, I know. While females extract the blood of hosts in order to develop and nourish eggs. Most mosquitoes lay their eggs directly in water. Others lay their eggs near bodies of water, but not within them. Okay, so like everywhere then. Not the desert. (laughs) Not the desert. Female mosquitoes can lay up to 500 eggs in their lifetime. So in under under two months, she's she's giving you 500 more mosquitoes. Well, wait, if we're nourishing the eggs, is that like, are we the father? Um, I think we're more of a nurture. Like we're like, we're, yeah, I guess. Like a food source. No, because we didn't, no, we, the, the eggs were made with Papa who died after 10 days. She's feeding us. Every mosquito that's ever been born has never met their father. Well, or they don't have memories because it was just so quick. You know what I mean? Well, it depends on how how fast that they deliver the babies upon impregnation. Within 48 hours, the eggs are hatched. Oh, wow. They're just literally on hyper speed. But the men, that's crazy. They have 10 days and they're out. And their entire life, they're like living in the pasture. Yeah, they're They're like, like, hey, I'm going to hang out in the garden. They're like, I don't have time in this short life to be eating blood. Like, 
It, no, it's isn't it crazy? That is the botany of desire. So mosquitoes, like all insects, are cold-blooded creatures, right? And like, how do they survive the winter? As a result, they are incapable of regulating body heat, and their temperature is essentially the same as their surroundings. So mosquitoes function best at 80 degrees, become lethargic at 60, and um, cannot function below 50. So, Sucks for you. So once it's below 50, you guys. They're done, but at sixty, they can. They're slow, but they're powerful. They would hate Salt Lake City. So, in tropical areas, mosquitoes are active year-round. In temperate climates, adult mosquitoes of some species become inactive with the onset of cool weather and enter a hibernation to live through the winter. So, some kinds of mosquitoes have winter-hardy eggs and hibernate embryos in eggs laid by the last generation of females in late summer. So like the last generation of the summer the summer flock, they like they're like oh winter's coming, I have to like mechanically change my body to make harder eggs so that these eggs can hibernate all winter. And I don't know how they like completely change their life cycle and put it on pause, but they do. That's spooky. And it's only a select amount of them, like the strong and the few and the brave. Oh, the popular ones. Yeah, like literally the most cool ones can survive. The uggos are out. Sorry. They're like so out. Yeah, so they like they'll burrow in like a hollow log or like a basement and like pass the winter in a state of torpor. T-O-R-P-O-R. These are the mosquitoes that one might see on a warm January or February day. That's why when they're like, why are these back already? It's like, oh, they were prematurely activated. By the heat. Oh. Yeah, their surroundings really dictate everything. Wow. No, I know. So, yeah, in the spring, the female emerges from hibernation, blood feeds and lays the eggs, and then we do it all over again. We are, like, really feeding information today. Like, scientific, groundbreaking, animalistic. I know. And I thought, like, if anything, like, we are a joke show. But I was reading that stuff, and I was like, I didn't know about that. No, me either. I, I really, I did not know about that. And I took some notes that are like no longer in my like notes. I don't know where they went, but I was looking about like what kind of people, oh, here they are, that why some people get bit more than others. And if you exhale a lot of carbon dioxide that attracts them, so bigger people and not saying like large, like if you're just like a larger person, like if you're six, four, you are going to ex exhale more carbon dioxide and that's how they like find you. They can see you from like 40 feet away. Oh, like, oh there's a bitch right there. I'm going to kill him. How can they see? Um, well, they're really attracted to like senses. They have eyes, babe. Oh. Um, they also love body heat. That's you. That's why they attack and you. And sweat. That's you as well. And I breathe like, <gasps> like, a, like a gorilla. You're a mouth breather. I am so chimpanzee. It's crazy. So I get why they like me. And there's certain blood types I like more. But as any normal adult in this country, I do not know my blood type. And campers, I'm looking at a lot of you out here. Behind the camera, some of you are exiting. Don't sit back down. Don't take it personally. No, it's okay. Because a lot of us don't know our blood type. And we got to be brave and we got to ask. And you, next time you ask, you got to remember it. Because you've asked before and you didn't remember. And now you're back to swear one like me. Arian Guilfoy told us you could do a take-home test. I'm not paying $90 when you have to get blood work done. I was supposed to get blood work done the other week and it was a nightmare. And I will not revisit that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On her fourth one, she was like, can we try your wrist? I was like, you cannot do it. It's okay. You're not going at the wrist. You've already messed up four times. Whatever. Like, the, well, And the last time I went, I hit the duck. I passed out and I was by myself. That was a nightmare. And they couldn't even get all the blood that they needed. Yeah. I Yeah, let's just not get our blood taken ever. I, I always want to be blood filled. I never have my blood taken. Yeah. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week, campers. Who are we loving? What are we loving? What is just really getting the vibes high? And they're like the antithesis of a mosquito bite. Like just joy, hope, and love. Um, Jonathan, what is your crush of the week? My crush of the week is bagging my own groceries. No, and he means it, campers. He literally is in... No, go into it. Take it away. Well, first I want to say, and I don't, you know, women supporting women, like I support you, but you, <laughs> put, you put groceries in the cart so chaotically. You will take a almond milk container 
and put it on its side. You'll put cold cuts in the cup holder. You put the most random stuff in. The, I have like, everything has its place, right? And in a cart, especially like the heavier stuff has to go on the bottom towards the back. And you're kind of just throwing like a watermelon in the where, where a child should go. And it's just like, that is reserved pretty much just for eggs. And I feel like everybody knows that. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's how I feel. So we're walking around the store and I'm like, I'm going to have to take everything out of this because you're putting everything in and you're putting it in really, really crazy. But I appreciate you and I love you for that. But there is an anatomy to a grocery bag to have it done right. I worked at a grocery store (laughs) for many years. I trained at like seven different stores. I was the bag boy your mother warned you about. And Uh, when I walk up That was cute. That should be it. Wait, someone at Lifetime, someone at Hallmark, write that down. The bag boy your mother warned you about. That was fun. I'm sorry. I want to highlight that. That was good. And when that cashier sees me pull out my bags, Mm -hmm. she knows that, like, I mean business. And I I really do enjoy bagging. If there's somebody there who's bagging, like, I don't know. I don't want to, like, take away from what they're doing. So, like, let them do it. I just know that, you know, I have to prepare myself to to know that it's not going to be exactly how I'm going to do it. And I have to shelf that because that's life. And it doesn't always go my way. But if I had it my way, I would just bag everything myself. Now, it does get scary sometimes when they're scanning too fast and they're really throwing them at you. Like, that's when I start to be shook to my core. But I feel like I have a really good method of obviously all the cold stuff has to go together. But I like to stack my cans in a specific way. But you got to distribute. Because if you don't distribute, it's going to be weebling, wobbling all over the place. And we're going to have an uneven bag. And who wants that? It is hysterical to watch Jonathan in a grocery store because he simply comes alive. Um, And in every relationship, at certain parts of the relationship, somebody has to take the lead. Like there's certain times where I'm in control and Jonathan kind of lets me back. Like when you're driving because you won't let me drive? Yeah, like I will admit I am a a way better driver than you and you are a way better grocery store store artist than I am. Yeah. Because when I put them on the conveyor belt, I'm putting them how I want them to be bagged just so it can be easy access, bingo, bango, everything done so. But the beauty of this is I actually hate bagging groceries. I think it's a Perfect. nightmare. I think it's so stressful. And it's such a joy, campers, to have a partner in your life that loves it so much that you actually don't even have to feel guilty about making him do all of it. Because if I even try to step in and grab something, he's upset at me. He's like, just stand behind the, the carriage and, and swipe the card. I'm so happy to swipe the card. Just bag and put it all in. And you know what? I do put my ha- honey ham in the cup holder. And I do put the watermelon wherever I can fit it. And it is a mess, but it all gets eaten. Also, I Venmo him for the groceries. Let's say we split the groceries. Yeah, you do. I'm just saying, I, but I'm okay. the one there that's just like. just want to have that to be known. Yeah, no, I'm just saying like, I'm the one that's like by yeah, the yeah. little payment situation. Yeah, you're I'm, handling the interaction yeah. with the cashier. I'm handling building a legacy within a bag. Uh, who who else? I'm there to to small talk with the scanner. Yeah. With, with the attendant. Yeah. And when I actually worked at a grocery store, I hated bagging. I think I just like hated bagging other people's stuff because they didn't put it on the conveyor belt right. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, I had all the cold stuff here. Why is there shredded cheese behind the, the box of crackers? See it coming and and I like... didn't see it coming. I'm too busy. I, I have to focus on what I'm doing. I can't see over the hill and through the roof. What's the code for banana? 4011. What's the code for green apple? Organic or non-organic? Non-organic. Five, I want to say like five, two, something, something. Campers in the in the grocery community, please let us know the code. Yeah, there was one day when we were sitting there and you were like quizzing me and I was getting them all right. And you that was were. years ago. Last time I last time I clocked in there was probably I was it was before I was 18. I didn't even turn 18 at that place. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's stuck in my memory log. But that's my camper crush of the week. Bagging my own groceries. I'm sorry, I'm like bopping this mic all over the place. Calm down. Just you're, excited. Your yam is my uck. I love that. Yeah, we're yin and yang. Am I your? Can you call me your little mooncake? Maybe let's not do that. Okay. <laughs> so, what are you crushing on? Um, I'm crushing on the tambourine artist in a band. And I know you're thinking, campers, you're saying Zachariah, you are just losing your mind, and that's true. But <laughs> you cannot admit the star quality and the excitement and the energy that is provided to the listeners of a live music performance when someone is up there with a tambourine and they're singing it and they're banging it on their hist, their hip, 
there is the one it's just i like a tambourine moment i like that kind of energy the kind of person who will use a tambourine is the kind of person i want to be friends with and i think too the type of song that's gonna have a tambourine in it is a song that you're gonna want to listen to yeah like i'm sorry like like drake's albums are not gonna have tambourine and i want to experiment with that on the side and i'll let you know if that would be good but like it's just a very specific style of like person and music and just it's groovy and it's, it's kind of like i i feel like i could handle it you know it's not like a guitar like i can't we were out the other night and this guy he was playing um it was they use it a lot in country it has the metal finger thing and it looks like a giant guitar that lays down it looks like like oh, guitar here yeah. which is just a normal guitar um and he was playing it so exquisitely with like random songs anybody requested that could never be me but hand me a tangerine Hand me a tambourine. Sorry, I'm selling the grocery store. Hand me a tambourine. I could keep a beat. Yeah. I could keep a beat. And he's doing something musically so challenged. And I'm looking at the singer with the tambourine. I'm saying, I want to be her. Mm -hmm. I want to wear bell bottom jeans. I want to wear a flowy top and a, a flower crown. And I just want to tambourine my life away. Yeah. Like it's just such a joyful experience. I really enjoy it. Now, there was a cover band that we always used to go see. I don't think I took you to see them. Did I ever take you to see them? No. Okay. It was like always uh, right before Thanksgiving. It was like Thanksgiving Eve. We would always go to see this particular cover band and they, what they would do, they would at one song towards the beginning of it, they would walk around while they're singing and they would hand out maracas and tambourines for people to keep. Now they were kind of cheap, but the smart thing that they did, they put all of their information to book them on the maracas and on the the tambourines so when people are like wake up the next morning extremely hungover they're like that was a great time oh here's a maraca i can have this great time at my wedding or like at my brother's wedding you know what i mean that's that is an, smart marketing that's great marketing it is the crazy thing they were divorced and you could tell at some of their shows because they were they started to like get divorced but they had so many bookings that they had already signed for that they had to keep going with their with their businesses. It's and a business. Yeah. Imagine playing at a wedding, singing love songs with the man that you're divorcing. Well, I hope they can find common ground and get back together. I should look them up and see if they're actually still playing together. Because when they're, you know, when they're shaking those tan tambourines... It feels electric. And he also had that thing you put in your mouth that's like, wow, 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 wow. Oh, he's really going out on all the fun. The wow, wow. It's just, it's so carefree. I, I listed a couple songs. I love that feature tambourine. Do you want to express them? Yeah. Um, Go Your Own Way, Fleetwood Mac. Stevie is a tambourine. She's a human tambourine herself. Like she's just flipping around and doing her thing with her twirls. Also, quite possibly my favorite tambourine song. Spooky by Dusty Springfield. Mm -hmm. That might end up on another episode in October for a you, song. I think you already did it. I think it's on the camp song. I'll have to go back and look, but it is like one of the best Halloween songs. And there's only like four or so. It's like that and Thriller back to back. Wait, is that is that a Halloween song? Well, it's spooky. So it's like, yeah, where okay. else would it fit? It's not Christmas. Yeah, I guess that's like an interesting adjective to call somebody you're crushing on. She's so spook. Like, we Dusty would say it. Dusty Springfield is, she's so, she would have loved the show. Well, her name's Dusty. No offense. <laughs> she's amazing. Is she alive? Um, I don't know. We'll have to check on that. Okay. I looked up tambourine culture on Reddit to see if anyone else was feeling the way that I was feeling. Uh -huh. And I found a really funny post I wanted to read because it made me laugh. Okay. So I forgot what, what the original posting was. Um, but essentially this woman posted on Reddit being like, Hey, I'm going to this Grateful Dead cover band and my sister wants to bring a tambourine and, um, I'm okay with her doing that like before, but I'm nervous that like, is she's going to do it the whole show and it's going to be really bad. Like, how do I tell her not to bring a tambourine? So is the sister in a stroller? N no, they're adults because they're going to shake down street. So they're, they're adults here. Um, but it's just like, this is what Reddit's for is to spread the good word. And this one man writes in, his name was, um, Michael Serotonin. Um, <laughs> he said at the lot of the show, totally fine. Encouraged even show itself. Absolutely not. He said, a few years ago, I was at a Grateful Dead cover band and a woman 10 to 15 rows ahead of me had maracas she was shaking. Offbeat. Incredibly annoying as I could hear it all too well. A guy a few seats over casually asked if he could give it a try 
and as soon as she handed it over, he chucked it as far as he could. Then he bought her a drink to make peace. If I wasn't already on my feet, I would have given the guy a standing ovation. (laughs) That is insane to bring an instrument to a show and play it from the cr- that's not okay. No, it's I don't think not. that's ever okay. I don't even think you should bring it to the lot because I feel like if everybody's trying to like vibe, it depends on the person who's bringing it. Well, tambourine is a vibe. That's the thing. It's like not even a real. It's like it's that like blurred lines between like what is an instrument and what is an aura. <laughs> you talk about a steel drum here. <laughs> like no, no, that's I, an instrument. That's a I drum. love that that man. He probably already knew that he was gonna get her a drink. He was like, in exchange for this drink, I'm gonna. Get this maraca gone. Here's have the drink as an apology. Chuck that shit. Off Goodbye. Too. Done. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs, campers. What song has been stuck in your head all week? I'm excited about mine, but Jonathan, as always. You will go first. Campers, get your tambourines out. My camp song is Spite by Omar Apollo. Can you give me a refresher on that one? Why you gotta ruin every night? 50K spin it out of spite. I love Omar Apollo. I think he is so cute. I love his music. Um, So I was doing... A, he also was just in that new... I don't think it came out publicly. I think it was a short movie. It's called Queer. And he had a full-on, like, sex scene with Daniel Craig. We'll have to find it. Oh, that, no, that that movie, the new Daniel Craig movie, that's, like, it's not, it's just in the festival circuit. It will be. I think Daniel Craig's going to get an Oscar for that. Okay. That's, like, when that comes to New York, we'll go see it. Because it's still doing, like, festival. So, no, 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 that's okay. I was just... I didn't know where it was because when I typed in that he was acting, not a lot of stuff came up about it. I was like, oh, that's crazy. But anyway, I actually found Omar Apollo. And when he started blowing up, I didn't put two and two together that this person that I was like listening to and it didn't have like cover art that had his face on it on um, on my iPod. I wasn't recognizing that that was the same person, but I discovered him on Colors. Have you heard of Colors on YouTube? I don't think so. Campers, if you are looking for new music... Besides our podcast, Camp Songs Playlist, which is for free, linked below, go on YouTube and look up Colors because they have so many different styles of music, so many walks of life, and each artist is assigned, sorry, I'll keep it brief. Each artist is like assigned a random color and they're in this like infinity wall room and all that is there is like a microphone hanging from the ceiling. Sometimes they'll have a special with a band, but it's usually just a live performance of the person singing and it sounds like a studio. Like it sounds absolutely insane, but they've been doing it for so long. Billie Eilish started on Colors. Wow. Yeah, that's where I heard of her first. She actually came back and she did a special like two weeks ago. I'm like, that's crazy. She came back and did a behind the scenes, which they never do. Anyway, back to uh, Omar Apollo. Whoever wrote this on his Wikipedia, they were really putting their bussy.org into it. Apollo created and uploaded his song to SoundCloud with a platform a platform with DIY streaming. At the time, he worked at Jimmy John's and Guitar Center, and he lived in an attic. In 2017, he was using the $30 he borrowed from a friend to upload his song, You Got Me, to Spotify. Is that is any of that true? We need to fact check, because I feel like this is somebody really trying to make the story sound like a, the underdog that overcame, which he could be. So we uploaded it to Spotify with the $30 he is now in debt for uh, from borrowing from his friend. And then it racked up 20,000 streams in one day. One year later, over 16 million streams. Wow. Yeah, so that was like good storytelling, whoever's on there. Um, And then also people were um, accusing him of queer baiting because he presents himself not so much like anymore, but as quote unquote, like straight. Um. But he's like, no, I'm not queer baiting. I'm literally gay. Like, what do you? Nobody asked me. Yeah, he's gay, right? He's gay. What a huge win for the LGBT. Like, yeah, it's just it's what we deserve. This one. Mm-hmm. And he's really cute. He's and so cute. He's with Frank Ocean for a while. Really? Yeah, and then a lot of his new music is about Frank. Oh, we miss you, Frank. Where yeah, are but you? I don't think they had a good relationship. Oh. Yeah, but I'm going to be Team Frank. Sorry. See both sides like Chanel. I see, see both, both sides, sides like Chanel. Chanel. So that is Omar Apollo. The song is Spite. It is fabulous, fantastic. He's a real cutie. And I didn't know Daniel Craig is gay. And when Daniel I... Daniel Craig is not gay. 
He's gay in the movie. No, I think. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because he's been told you that. Listen, but this is the point. This is exactly what I was saying about people calling uh, calling Omar out for queer baiting. It's like we don't know, and it's not really our business. But there is a lot of stuff online speculated that he's like been with a guy. I don't know, and I'm gonna be so honest and or earnest and or purse. Pernicious. Pernicious. You're, you're being pernicious right now. No, I'm not. I just wanted to reuse the word improperly again. Um, I don't really care. I don't really care. But I think that he is. If I cared, I would think that. But I don't. Well, so I don't. It would be another win for the LGBTQIA. LGBTQIA plus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that sounds like a streaming service. I love it. Okay, so yeah, that one. <laughs> okay, we're not getting into that. Okay. My KF song this week is also super undercover. I don't know if you've heard of this one before. It's Walk Away by Kelly Clarkson. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Um, 2004 will never be the same because we got this song. That was the year the 90s ended. You think so? In my head, the 90s ended in 2004 when Car Kelly Clarkson came out with this song. Yeah. Yeah. I can see how there's a blur there because I think to the untrained eye, they'd be like the 90s ended in 99. It's like... Well, no, it's never that simple. Yeah, obviously we had the big Y2K celebration in 2000. And then there was Twin that Towers. kind of just like that. Yeah, we're like, we're, okay. Um, there's got to be some blur there, blurred mm -hmm. lines. Nah, that's not the song of the week. Nope, keep going. Um, it's off the iconic Breakaway album. Can you picture the Breakaway album cover? Um, she's at a house party. She's not. She, it's a, kind of like a, a, a very light and breathy album cover. And she's like this. With her oh. hands like that. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? What? I'm thinking of Miss Independent Music Video. Mm -mm, and that's not what the question was. Yeah. We'll okay. get there. Um, this video, guys, gave me chills. I don't ever remember seeing it before. She's never looked better. She's never looked cooler. It's really what 20, 2004 coolness like looked like, in my opinion. What color is her hair? Her hair is brown, but it's pinned back into that like long hair um, like mohawk. Like, you know, people have a mohawk, but they didn't shave their head for it. They just pinned it back and they went up with it. Like, Miley, I can't be tamed. Yeah, or like Sanjaya. Yeah. Like, that kind of like... It's, okay. Yeah, it's very cool. Very Fergie-inspired. Mm. Okay. Black eyeliner, nose ring, hoops, drop crotch, green pants, a crop top gray blazer, belly button pierced, and these black knee-high, like, I don't know, like, studded boots. And she's in this giant room, and it's covered in microphone wires, like like the black wires all over the ground. Mm -hmm. She's with her big band. And then the entire video is so cool because it's just like little vignettes of people in their day-to-day -day lives, like actors, obviously. But like it's like a waitress, a police officer, a teacher, a hairdresser. And they're all just like singing this song as if it's like playing on the radio or in their headphones. And they're just like going crazy because they love the song so much. Oh, that's kind of meta. Yeah. So she's just like having them like in their like normal lives, but like just like jamming out to the song. Okay, so it's not even about like the music video is not about people like walking away from a relationship. Or no, something. it's kind of like how like that's that that so like that's what the relationship like. So the subject of the song is like about if it's not like, working out, then just leave. Don't say and make it worse. Like just get out. And I think her whole idea was like, oh, this is such a relatable topic that like it doesn't matter who you are, everyone right. can listen to this and be get it. And, relationship, like, it. a friendship, a job. Mm hmm. I like the part in the song where it like does the breakdown. Is it the bridge? And she's like, I want to love. I want to fight. I feel the burn of my desire. I want a man by my side. Not a boy who runs and hides. Um, yeah, no, it's just so good. Should we sing the chorus a little bit? I don't know if I remember it. I'm looking for attention. Not another question. Should you stay or should you go? Well, if you don't have the answer, why the hell are you standing here? Hey, 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 hey. Just walk away, walk away. <laughs> All you gotta do is walk away. <laughs> no, I just think Kelly's great. Uh, she just is continuing to be a light in the industry. And I wanted to give her um, some flowers today. And that's a song that you definitely know. And when you put it on, you're like, this is her vocal. Like, ooh, she sings like nobody else. She really can sing. She's like, I'm not worried. She need to warm up. She's like, I just got it. She is the American Idol. It's Kelly Clarkston. She's the Rachel Ray of the singing world. And I can't. Don't, why? I just, I always feel that about her. They just remind me of the same person in different bodies. Okay. Don't, doesn't she have like a Rachel Ray, like, I think it's essence? the, I think it's her hair. And yeah, she kind of. Maybe years ago looks like each other. I don't. There was that concerning more, video going around of her it's recently, more, but that's not my business. It's more than just the physicality. 
I've never heard Rachel Ray sing a day in my life. It's see, that's the thing is you're you're too caught up in the aesthetics. It's an energy here. Camper, can someone validate that, please? I, there is a quality that the two of them share, and I can't can't put my thumb on it. I can't. And I, my thumb is floating. I can't get it down. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's all we have for today. What this has been a yap. This has for been sure. a yap. And speaking of thumbs floating, if you want to give this show a thumbs up, give us five stars, a five star rating and review anywhere you can rate us and review us. If you want to be on our Monday episodes for Trail Mix, drop us a line. Hit us up via email on the internet, camcounselorspod at gmail.com or camcounselorspodcast.com. Yeah, we'll see you next week. We'll see you the week after. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.